Welcome back. All right, so uh, my eyes aren't working today because it feels like I'm, I'm overtired. Uh, at any rate, it could be allergy related as well. So I'm really grateful for all the comments about my eyes and how I'm either drunk or just not sober when, of course, I'm sober. I've never done a video when I'm not sober and I, I don't, I don't, I don't drink. I keep myself sober all day. Uh, at any rate, I, I don't have time for, for drinking or, or being otherwise mind altered. I just don't have time for that. Uh, so we'll get into news of the day and uh, it is April the 1st, but everything on the board is legit. I was raised that if you make the, the April Fool's joke after 12 o'clock afternoon, uh, you're the fool. Uh, all of the jokes must be done before noon hour. That was how I was raised. Okay, so we'll start off with the Vegas Golden Knights. Now, first off, Aiden Hill is still out. There's no real timetable for his return. Uh, Tomas Hurdle at practice today in a non-contact jersey, and I've seen all the, oh, he'll be good for the game, game one of the playoffs. The expectation with Hurdle is that he'll be back before the playoffs, and you need him to be. Now, for all of the, while well, Mark Stone returns to the lineup, yada, 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 all these comments, the reality is with Hurdle, it's different. This is a player who has not played for the Vegas Golden Knights. He does not have chemistry with line mates. You don't know where he's going to play. So it's important to get Hurdle in the lineup before the playoffs. You don't want to be going into game one of the playoffs with a whole bunch of lines in a blender, uh, especially if you're going to be starting the, the playoffs on the road, if you're going to be a lower seed, which is at this point where Vegas finds themselves. So Hurdle coming back is going to be massive. And of course, that'll be a debut for him with the Vegas Golden Knights coming back for this season. He had a decent year overall with San Jose. Uh, but yeah, there's no guarantee Hurdle fits. There's there's just no guarantee Hurdle's going to fit. We shall see. Uh, fingers crossed and all that. But uh, Hurdle at practice for them. Again, non-contact jersey, so he's not close. But he should be in the lineup before the playoffs. That's always been the plan anyways. Uh, Rick Tockett, uh, glad to be on the road after, after his uh, homestand where he felt like things were getting a little bit stale. Uh, and that's, that's what happens. You're home for three weeks. It can get a little bit stale. So they finished the homestand 5-3-1, and one, which I think is a decent record for a nine-game homestand, right? Uh, and he also says that Demko may be a little bit ahead of schedule in terms of his return, keeping in mind the LTIR situation, the earliest that Demko can return for the Canucks is April the 6th. So he won't be in the lineup for their game against Vegas. So now, of course, you know, with the Vegas game tomorrow and beyond, uh, the earliest he can come back is on the 6th. So uh, we'll see with Demko when that does take place. But uh, the Canucks right now doing pretty well with the Smith. And yesterday, Solov's had a decent game for them. And so as long as that continues to be the case, fingers crossed on the Canucks. Your three stars of the week. They haven't released the three stars of the month as of yet. Uh, I would think the three stars of the month are coming soon. But Connor McDavid's the first star. He was third star last week. So three games, three goals, five assists, eight points. McDavid, one of those rare times where you see a player uh, as one of the three stars of the week in back-to-back -back weeks. Uh, Logan Thompson, the second star. He went 3-0 for Vegas with a 971 save percentage. So yes, they're without Aiden Hill, but Logan Thompson's done perfectly fine uh, in, in relief. Uh, and Alexi Lafreniere, I'm pretty sure this is the first time he's shown up in the three stars. Three games for him with the Rangers this week. Five goals, two assists, seven points. And, of course, a hat trick amongst the five goals there. So Lafreniere playing really well for the New York Rangers. That's good news. Uh, I've seen him written off as a bust many times over. Uh, but as I've been saying this season, he's definitely playing really well. And it feels like he is starting to realize his potential. And that's great news for a New York Rangers team that in a few weeks will be playing games that really matter in the playoffs and having one more weapon in the playoffs uh, can only help them. So Jeff Skinner, and the reason why I'm wearing Buffalo jersey, uh, he's set to play game number 1000 in his next game out. Uh, he has not appeared in the playoffs. And if you look at it too, uh, players who might end up getting bought out this offseason, Skinner leads the list as one that could only because if Buffalo bought him out in this offseason, they have massive savings. Uh, this is a year where they get massive savings, especially that first year. Uh, Skinner's $9 million cap hits pricey. If they decided to move Skinner, I, I don't think that the $9 million cap hits palatable to other teams in the NHL. Uh, it is too bad Skinner hasn't appeared in the playoffs. It's not of his own fault. Uh, he started out in Carolina at a time where that team never made the playoffs, and then he got traded to Buffalo. So... We know Buffalo hasn't been in the playoffs since 2011. Uh, Skinner's been been very good for Buffalo. I see 
no reason why if if they did decide to buy him out that you wouldn't see teams not necessarily a bidding war but i think there'd be there'd be a few teams that would be interested skinner can get you 25 30 goals a year i think even still uh in the national hockey league so all the best to skinner on whatever happens on the rest the rest of this season but a thousand regular season games and, and no playoff games to speak of it's too bad because he's he's a good player and i think his game would work in the playoffs so maybe we'll find out next season. Hopefully in Buffalo. Um, again, I'm not going to get optimistic with Buffalo. I did that this past year, and that didn't turn out well. So I'm just trying something a little bit different. I'm going to be like, no, I'm not going to get optimistic with Buffalo at this stage. And we'll see how things go. Uh, Pat Maroon uh, skates with the Bruins today. Uh, first time since the trade at the deadline that he has done so. He's still seen as week to week, and then will likely graduate to day to day. He's supposed to be out four to six weeks, so we're getting close to around that timeline for him. But again, they don't give us any any kind of clarity on what's going on with these players or exactly what they're dealing with. So Maroon is a player that I think will help the Bruins on their fourth line. Uh, I don't think it's a huge needle mover. But remember, one thing with Maroon, he does have three Stanley Cup rings. And so for Boston, they're looking to add one for him, which would add one for them. And we'll see in a couple of weeks' time here where he slots in in all likelihood. Just from the way they're wording it, it sounds like probably right before the playoffs he comes in. Same reasons as I mentioned with Hurdle, although obviously Maroon's going to have a smaller effect on a team than Hurdle. You don't want to be bringing a guy into play for the first game of the playoffs who hasn't played with that team before. Uh, Dvorak of the Montreal Canadiens, he's dealing with a torn pectoral muscle. Uh, he's now seen as day-to-day. -day. It looks like he will return before the end of the season. And for people who say, well, why bother? You know, you've only got a couple weeks left. Team's not making the playoffs. These players want to make sure they still have jobs in the National Hockey League, even if it's not going to be in, with the team they're, they're currently employed by. So, for instance, with Dvorak, he's currently employed by Montreal. Comes back and has a really good run the rest of the season. It may look like it's pointless uh, to fans and, and in general because Montreal's out of the playoff picture. But it could, be, could mean a lot for Dvorak showing GMs or maybe scouts for other teams. Hey, he can still play. Uh, so at any rate, Dvorak, it looks like it's going to be back soon. Once it's down to day-to-day, -day, it's usually about a week when it's day-to-day. -day. I, I, I don't know. Maybe they don't know how calendars work. At any rate, uh, one other piece of injury news from tonight. And this is good news for Seattle, a team that is out of the hunt for the playoffs as well. But they have really struggled without Vince Dunn. Vince Dunn is... Has, has really made an argument for why uh, he is the guy who makes things work on their blue line. Uh, he's been dealing with an upper body injury, and while he's been out, their record has been, well, it's been rough. Uh, he is a game-time decision for tonight's game against the Sharks. So a game that should be winnable for the Seattle Kraken in the event that they get Vince Dunn back. It makes it all that much better. Uh, Seattle's going to be an interesting team to watch in the offseason, too. We'll see if, uh, if any players get bought out, what happens there. Uh, yeah, buyout season we're going to be discussing soon enough because in less than three weeks' time, half the league is going to be done for the season as we're into the playoffs, and then we can get into the discussions of who stays, who goes, and all that. And, of course, I do the playlists once we get into the playoffs on teams that have missed the playoffs and then the, the playlist on teams as they get knocked out of the playoffs as well. So look forward to that once again this year. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you've not done so already. Thank you guys so much for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.